the Mets. Me. Lonzo cracks oh. one of the Mets oh. win the ball game. Out of sight. <laughs> Listening to the Shea and Sons Podcast with your hosts, Keith and Keyshawn Diaz. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Shea and Sons Podcast. We are back, baby brother, episode seven. What's going on, bro? What's going on, man? It's a lot to talk about. I wish we had a rain delay for this past week in Metsland. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, man. Metsland has been, uh, I don't know, it's been a rocky road to say the least. Um, but you know what? This is what we're here for. We're here for the good times. We and we gotta be here for the bad times. Even though it's been yep. pretty bad. I mean, we gotta call a spade a yep. spade. The team right now, they are pretty flat and they're pretty bad, actually. So yep. we're gonna go through it quick. Um, we just wanna also remind you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate everybody out thank there. YouTube, uh, you. Spotify, Apple, everything. Thank you. Thank you again for all our friends on you know Twitter and stuff like that. Um, drop yep. us feedback and stuff. Don't be afraid. Give us some like yep. honest uh, stuff on anywhere you can, where you listen or you download. Um, we definitely respond. We're we're definitely you know want to interact with everyone a lot more. So um, we understand people have lives. You're not gonna listen to every episode, and you know as we grow, we'll grow with new people. But yeah, give us some feedback. Let us know what we're doing. Let us know what you want to see. Let us know what you want to hear, and we could definitely incorporate it. Um. With that being said, let's kick off episode seven, baby brother. Um, we start against Atlanta in a doubleheader because, like you mentioned, rain delay kind of set some games back. So this past Monday, we had two games against Atlanta. We split the games. Um, game one was a really interesting game. Uh, nine to eight, Spencer Strider, the best pitcher on the mound. Um, you know, the Mets fought back. The Mets really kind of had a really good offensive game. I mean... This is probably the last game that we had that we can probably all agree that was like the offense was there. They showed up. They did their thing. Um, We had an Alonzo home run. We had a home run from Brett Beatty, you know, off a lefty. Um, A lot of guys, you know, got on base. A lot of guys scored. I'm a big, you know, component of run scored. If you score, to me, that's one of the hardest things to do in baseball. We had one, two, three, four, five, six guys all get a run scored in the starting lineup. Um, actually, and then a guy came off the bench and scored, so that, that's actually six. So that's a big deal. Um, but the interesting thing about this game was that game number one was a bullpen game by Buck. Um, before we go into game number two, we all were a little bit confused about that. Uh, Denny Reyes started the game, and he only lasted an inning. Um, and later we found out that Jose Budo was the 27th man on the taxi squad. Um, before we even continue, shouldn't he start the game? It made no sense. He mm. should have started the game because he would have been on normal rest. So why not start the kid instead of sending him to Uzbekistan or wherever the hell they play down there? <laughs> and, you know, just start him and, and see what happens. I don't understand why they just had a had a bullpen guy and played a bullpen game when their bullpen has been taxed. Yeah, Like, it has been taxed since day one. So, I mean, it's neither here or there. Yeah. Another notch on Buckonomics. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, this start for Reyes was a skip start so that we can give Kodai Senga some more rest. We'll touch on that later. But it results in a game that pretty much both teams went off offensively, but the Mets lose 9-8. They did make a late surge in the game to try and steal the victory, but we could not overcome the Braves' bullpen at the end. But that moves us on to game number two, a game that the Mets did win, 5-3. to three. Um, Francisco Alvarez game. This was the game that the kid showed the whole fan base that he should be the number one catcher moving forward until Narvaez gets back. Francisco Alvarez pretty much won the game with the go-ahead double, two RBIs, um, you know, and he called a really good game. Uh, McGill kind of gave us what he normally gives us, roughly five innings, three runs. Um, That's kind of much the McGill game. Now you can label that as the McGill game, get you five innings, probably three runs. Mets got to score four that day, and thankfully the Mets score five this day. The offense did you know, kind of come back to earth a little bit because we all know what this Mets offense is. We did get five runs. There wasn't much to kind of go off of. Um, I mean, our one through four was pretty much, what, two, four, 
seven plus a two for 15 i want to four and that's gonna be a common theme moving forward um bullpen did what they could drew smith got the w uh robertson has kind of been as solid as it can be um yeah i mean the brett Beatty, francisco alvarez these kids man what do you think yeah and i know that i noticed that uh in that game there was the, the inning before miguel gave up the three runs there was a <laughs> There was an inning where he had a lot of trouble and Alvarez kind of like like slowed him down, I noticed. And I know that we we continue to harp on his defense mm-hmm. uh, over his offense because his bat hasn't gotten going, but it's huge. Like he's made a humongous leap in that area, in the area where they didn't want to play him because of that. They didn't want him to come up last year because of that area, you know, his defensive game and and how he called the game i thought him and mcgill had a good rapport going but obviously mcgill just ran out of gas i don't have a problem with him staying in and buck not you know going to the bullpen so early even you know having a game before that where the bullpen was taxed right um so yeah i i, I thought i this was the francisco alvarez game to your point and he showed it he a real gutsy uh our our uh two two run double there in mm-hmm. the end but yeah, uh, it was nicely hit yeah, no, it was, two, it was down good. the line yeah yeah strong velocity i mean i mean that's what that's kind of the game he's gonna bring us you know he's gonna definitely hit some right. some long balls but you give me a double you hit for you know extra base hits and stuff like that timely hitting too sign me up you know especially from a catcher right. especially with you know the past few years with us with catchers you know offensive is offensively even now yeah even now we're still trying to get yeah we're still trying to get something out of him but the kid is the kid is bringing it and at 21 years old i mean find me another 20 year old 21 year old catcher who right now is ranked number three in strike rate and is even though he's batting what like 215 210 i mean this is the first time he's seeing major league pitching and he's doing this i mean there's guys on our team like solid veterans batting lower than him so I'm sorry. This kid is the real deal. Um, we split the series with the Braves. You know, we did lose that first game that Friday night with the rain out. Uh, that was the Max Freed game. It is what it is. We lose two out of three. We were competitive, though. This is something that I've noticed with the Mets, though. When the Mets have a big challenge in front of them, you're going to get probably really good baseball out of them. Even though they may fall flat on their face, the Mets yeah. step up to a big challenge. And one challenge that was waiting for them after this uh series against the Braves was a a little stretch run against pretty average or below average teams. And what we've noticed in the past, especially in our last episode, when we talked about when we faced the Nationals, we played down to our opponent. So we had a nice little series out in Detroit. First time we were there since like 2015 or something. You, you, You can definitely let me know what year it was in the comments or anywhere, you know, you listen or download. And, um, interesting, you know, not really fond of going to Detroit. Not the best, you know, watch on the eyes. No disrespect to any Detroit Tigers fan out there. But, you know, we're not we're not accustomed. The Mets are not accustomed to going, you know, to that part of the country to face the Detroit Tigers. So, interesting. We got a three-game series against the Tigers. Um, first game in a doubleheader because we also had rain in Detroit. So, you know, rain delays are kind of like catching up on the Mets, which is kind of they always do roughly. Um Hopefully it ends soon as the good weather comes through. The Mets start game one really good, actually. I think the Mets' first game out there was a really good, winnable game. The Mets put up five runs. Usually when the Mets put up more than four runs, the Mets win. Tommy Pham went nuclear. I mean, Tommy Pham game, three for four. Home run, you know, you had a big double. You know, Mark Canna hit a home run. You get one of those, you take it to the back. Lindor, you kind of knew Lindor was going to get one the way he was swinging the bat. And... Not to mention, for some odd reason, I know it was windy in Detroit, but the ball was flying. The ball was just shooting off the bat of the Tiger players and the Met players. Um, Lucchese was on the bump, but Lucchese gets touched up a little bit. Four runs, um, two home runs, which we haven't seen from Lucchese of the yet. Um, 46 pitches. Interesting. 46 pitches. It's not like he was, like, drowning in trouble. Um, the Mets lose this game five to six. The Mets could have won this game. The Mets were winning this game. Uh, Adamino kind of blew it at the end, but 
uh, yeah. Marte, he really misjudged the ball, and it, it 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 just compounded the trouble for Adovino, and um, Adovino gets the blown save. Uh, I'm a big component of winning the first game of a doubleheader. If we go real back to what we just finished talking about with the Braves, we lost nine to eight in the first game. We could have won that, and then look, the second game we came out, we held it down. That way, you get a little bit of a sweep. But um, we start this game off with an L. Out of you know, Marte on my notes here, the the juice balls. What, were, what was your take on game one, man? You can't waste the Mark Hanna and Tommy Pham game. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't waste home runs from Tommy Pham <laughs> and Mark Hanna. What I, are we doing? I, Come on. Yeah, this is a. Uh... You are spitting facts. You cannot waste these <laughs> opportunities from the others because you don't know when you're getting these games again, man. I hear you. No, you couldn't man. be more right, man. You couldn't be more right. No, man. man. We, 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 we wasted that, right? And then the 46 pitches, that just, it. I don't know. It was mind-numbing. I still don't understand it. Now, if you can't tell they everybody want- who's listening, why was he pulled after 46 pitches? Do you know why? To save him for a for a Sunday game, which is today, the by the way, everybody, which is which where is we're today. recording. He was worried yeah. about a game that was six five days away, and he's told us yeah, he doesn't worry about tomorrow. Up. He worries about today, right, Buck? He worries about today. You pitched him four innings, forty six pitches. Not saying that he looked great. He did not. But you're coming off of just having played a double hitter where you had to waste all your pitches. I know there was a day off in between. And then the the you know, you have to waste guys in this game. So like, what? I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. I thought he was hurt, but he's not. He just wanted to save him for Sunday. Maybe he's better on Sunday. Who knows? Nobody Maybe, knows yeah. with this man. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're gonna get. You, it's a lot of people use Buckonomics as a negative connotation, and it kind of is more or less. But I like <laughs> to let people know Buck does make good calls. You know, like my yeah, favorite call. I guess my favorite call, just real quick, is like when Buck pinch hit Marcana in the fourth inning in San Francisco. That was a great move. You don't see that from a lot of managers. Pinch hit in the fourth inning with no injuries. Um, but then you get moves like this one, and it's like this is the real Buckonomics. Like 46 pitches, I don't know, man. Uh, shout out to yeah. Buck, though. I mean, hey, he knows more than us. He's the manager. It is what it is. Yeah, he's the manager. He's supposed to know more than us. He gets paid for it. Yeah. But, you know. So we, there. <laughs> we, we dropped game one um, again in a doubleheader, which, you know, now you got Gary, Keith, and Ron, or Gary and Keith, or Gary and Ron, whoever was calling the game, letting everybody know, oh, the Mets don't ever get swept in a doubleheader. You know, SNY is going to repeat that till you turn blue in the face. And guess what happened? The Mets get swept in the doubleheader in game number two. Mets lose eight to one. And I think I can speak for the majority of the fan base. We all kind of felt that this was coming because this was Max Scherzer's first game back. And the prop for Max Scherzer was going outrageous. You know, they had him in the dugout doing the whole, oh, I'm mad, I'm angry, doing the, the nod back and forth and like doing some weird, crazy, tough guy act. Like, you know, no one's scared of that anymore, brother. Please stop that. All right. No one, no one that don't scare nobody, bro. Please relax. You know, the camera knew when to find him too, like ironically, but it is what it is. The Mets lose eight one. He gets absolutely shelled. Probably maybe one of his worst starts of his career. I actually should have looked that up. Uh, Max gave up six earned runs in three and one third of an inning with two home runs given up another, you know, trend that's continuing with the starting pitching is just the home runs given up. Um, the Mets offense just looked like, for lack of a better word, they just didn't give a fuck. They didn't give a fuck. And I don't like the curse, but they didn't give a fuck. Mets were 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. I'm going to just run down the batting order and what they did real quick. Nimmo, 1 for 4. Lindor, 1 for 4. McNeil, 0 for 3. Alonzo, 1 for 3. Vogelback, 1 for 4. Canna, 1 for 4. Beatty, 0 for 3. Guillaume, 0 for 3. Alvarez, 0 for 3. We left 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We left 13 men on base. And we were 0 for 7 with opportunities to bring them in. This was a game where fans started to wonder if Buck Showalter lost the clubhouse. But I also think, you know, a lot of people are questioning, you know, the body languages. Um, Tommy Pham was visibly upset with one of the calls from one of the umpires. 
a lot of fans were not sure if the clubhouse was lost by Buck, but I also think, you know, watching Max Scherzer get shelled like that is a little bit eye-opening, especially if you're on the field with him. And it's just like, what can go wrong will go wrong at that point. Um, your thoughts? I was wrong. He was cheating. <laughs> he was cheating. <laughs> That boy was oh, Let me tell Yo, you, that you know boy what? Was this is why we love doing this. We keep it a buck when we have to keep it a buck. You know, there's no narratives at play. We don't do the shit for clicks. We keep it a buck when nah. we take it out. We take it out. You know, it is. Yeah, what we it take is. it out. We take it out. I took a stupid out. That boy was cheating. <laughs> let me tell you, he gave up six runs and in three innings. He didn't look good for not one of those outs. No, nope. even though even the K that he got, I think he got like two Ks. Even those Ks, he got shit, three, he three strikeouts, awful. three strikeouts. That that was that was one of the worst performances I've seen from Max Scherzer, a guy of his caliber in general, just a guy of his caliber, a, a Verlander, yeah. a Kershaw, you know, guys Without like that. Know. Absolutely, they have rough starts. Absolutely, but yeah. That was that. The ball was flat. The ball was just staying right in the middle it of the looked, zone. Looked, there was no movement. Yeah, it looked. It looked like it felt like. I hate to say it because this is such a fan thing to say, but I like. I felt like I could. Hit, I could have hit it. It just felt like you watching me. It's just like this looks so bad. You know, we're not. We're not yeah, pitching coaches like, or hitting coaches, but it just looked bad. Right, right. Everything, everything looked so flat. He he was throwing his fastball at ninety one. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's ninety one, bro. That boy is cooked. It's, yeah, it's, I'm sorry. It's it's over, bro. Like the the experience was fun. He's a schizophrenic. Please stop putting the camera on him. There's something mentally wrong up here. It's so funny. We just, I just had an ambulance. Stuff. I just had an ambulance go by my window, and you're saying this. It's actually hilarious. <laughs> it's like God is like bro. listening and joining in on the phone. By the way, interesting. There's something wrong with that dude. I I please stop putting the camera on him. I said, why? I'm begging you. Thank you. Yeah, man. It, it, we have. Very big problems with Max Scherzer. And, you know, a lot of people want to point out a lot of people for not, you know, doing well with their batting average and how much they get paid with their batting average. Max Scherzer is getting paid 40, over $40 million this year, guys. Um, shout out to the ambulances in the background because, you know what, I'm going to welcome that background noise if you can hear it out there, guys. Um, because it's warranted. Because this man... Not only has this man failed last season, let them oh love the love it, love it. This is perfect. Look at the sound. I don't know if you can hear it, but this is awesome. <laughs> it was right on cue. It's beautiful. <laughs> Not only did this man stink it up last year when we needed him the most, he stunk it up leading up to that moment, and it's been stinky since. So, yeah. you know, shout out to the Met fans that do the reactionary, you know, you know, temper tantrum. I think this is warranted, respectfully. This is bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is bad. But yeah. um, we also got a debut by someone by the name of Muckinhern. When I saw that, I said, yeah, it's a rap, homie. It's a rap, homie. Shout out to Javier Baez. Had a great two games versus us. I mean, hey, you know him. what? Good, Good for him. him. Good for him. A lot of people want to say he, finally, he, he hit his first home first run, home run of against, against the Mets. Why not, right? <laughs> that was an easy bet, you know. Jesus. Yeah. Ah oh, man. But with all that being said, we had another game left. The third game the next yeah. day, and I just ran down the batting over of that game. I'm gonna run down the batting over of this, the batting order of this game. I'm not even gonna tell you who. I'm just going to go 1 for 4, 1 for 4, 0 for 3, 0 for 3, 1 for 3, 0 for 3, 0 for 3, 0 for 2, 0 for 2. Mets get swept in Detroit. Um, but there is a silver lining here. Justin Verlander's debut game. We were all excited for it. We all were sitting here saying, yo, Justin Verlander finally going to show us what he got. He's a New York Met. He's here. And it's two back-to-back -back home runs in the first inning. And everybody at home and everybody at work and everybody watching is pressing a certain button that we want to present to you guys today. And this it's the, is, this let is, them know what it is. <laughs> this is the Shea and Sons. All right. The Shea and Sons panic button. And we hitting. <laughs> this, shit, this shit is awful. Whatever's going on right now, 
if you are panicking <laughs> right now about the New York Mets, it's definitely warranted Absolutely. because what we are watching is a, is awful. It's a constipated offense and it's a pitching staff <laughs> that can't pitch for shit. All right, we were spending all this money. Where is the money going? A constipated offense. I feel like offense. Steve Cohen got a bad, that. he got a bad investment, bro. Yeah, he got a bad investment right now. But you know what? After those two home runs. Justin Verlander locked the fuck in. Justin Verlander mm-hmm. looked like Justin Verlander. And it was so nice to see. I, I he yeah. got through he got five innings in. He didn't go deep, but five strikeouts, we'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Only one walk. Because you know the, uh, by the way, the Mets lead the National League in walks from starting pitching, by the way. Um you know, only two earned runs. It was only two home run balls, and we all we did mention the balls were juiced. It felt like they were juiced for that. You know what we saw? Yeah. Some guys hitting home runs, that we, and the way the home runs were going out the park. I mean, those weird low angles, the yeah. straight line drive home run, like Tommy Pham's home run. It to me, I didn't think it went out. I actually thought it went foul. Or yeah. it, it was weird. Yeah. I don't know, but um, even some of their home runs, the buy one of the buyers' home runs just barely got crept over the fence. So, yeah. um. Even after Verlander, the bullpen did pretty well. Three shot out. Um, but the offense didn't help him up. So just shout out to Justin Verlander because he was degromed for the first time in his career. So shout Yeah, out. congratulations. Sh- shout <laughs> he out. got that time. Yeah, shout out, JV. <laughs> Welcome to being a New York Mets starting pitcher because this is the life of a New York Mets starting pitcher. You pitch good and you yeah. take the L. Yeah, but at least you're getting yeah. paid. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. At least you're getting paid, yeah. <laughs> at least you're getting paid, homie. Um... We're going to just run right through the Rocky series. Um, we both initially thought we were going to, we were probably going to bounce back to some degree. Um, maybe take two out of three. Being hopeful, we understand. But, you know, it, it still wasn't keen on the eye, the way we were performing against the Rockies. We are going to play a game today, by the way, so just keep that in mind. But Friday, we did win one nothing. Senga actually goes six innings, gives him no runs. You know, Senga looked great. You know, I'll take that. To me, that's good for Senga, you know, because if you're going to give him that extra rest and this is what he gives you, then maybe they know something we don't. So this is a good way to point out Buckonomics kind of works because it resulted in a win. So even though we had to take two L's to get to this point, which is the bad part of Buckonomics, we still got a win today. A win that we needed, you know, because you kind of come back from a sweep in Detroit. You're like, the world is ending, you know, so... The Mets offense was still non-existent, but one of our familiar characters, Brandon Nimmo, home run, double, RBI, kind of pretty much was the reason why we won. Had a great catch in center field, and um, this is why Brandon Nimmo is probably the best player on the team this year. Uh, again, 0 for 6, runners in scoring position. Uh, Beatty moved up to 6 in the batting order, so that's a positive. We were we saw some movement with Buck. Good point of Buck and Alex, yeah. just pointing that out. Um yeah, I'll just jump over to game two so we can just move the F on because, like you said, or you mentioned to me privately, like, this series, it's the Rockies and the Mets. I mean, I don't know. There's nothing really here. Unfortunately, there is something here in game number two. The Mets lose 5-2. to two. Uh, Mets offense, again, wasn't really too productive. Um, Lindor had a pretty good game. Nimmo, again, had another good game. But everybody else was garbage, pretty much. That's the honest yeah. truth. No one else did anything. Um Tyler McGill game, four and two-thirds and three earned runs. That is a trend, guys. Just keep that in mind. Tyler McGill is the three-run pitcher with can only get to the fifth inning and stay there. That's it. That's all you're getting for Tyler McGill. Three walks, garbage. Um, 0 for 6 again. Runners in scoring position. Common trend with the New York Mets. Um, Alvarez, not bad. Got on base. Got a hit. Got a, RBI, uh, got a run. He scored as a catcher. Batting ninth. Got a walk. So, productive is there. Production is there, excuse me. Mark Canna got to start at first base. Ugly, nasty, yuck. Don't want to see it anymore. Um, uh, interesting point, real quick. Um, you know, Gosick seems to be the long man for Buck. Yeah. He might go too long with him, though. When you get to the point where you're touching, like, more than two innings, I think you got to kind of reel him in. I know these starters are not helping you, Buck. Like, I get it. I know, I know, I know. But some guys you may need to kind of like reel it in a bit. Uh, Nagosik is the reason why we kind of lost the game, giving up the two-run home run to the Rocky shortstop. Um, it kind of ruined the day for McGill. But those runs kind of like still fall on McGill. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but the offense didn't show up. You know, the offense just stunk it up again. So there's nothing we could do about it when we're not we're not hitting where men in scoring position. 
Um, what are your thoughts on the Rocky series real quick? And by the way, we played the third game today, the rubber match. Um, Lucchese is on, on plenty of rest because he only got 46 pitches his last game. Um, but yeah, your thoughts on the Rockies uh, series? This team can't hit runners in scoring position. At all. Um, and I know that it's a new year and, you know, the first month of the season is out of the way, so we cannot, we can no longer say, oh, but last year they did this and last year they did that. Last year, this team did not waste those opportunities. Right. Especially early on in the season. And it's right. the same team. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not much of a different team. Right. So I think, I, I, I don't know. I, it, it just feels like somebody mentioned it to us privately. It feels like an extension of September. Yeah, it does. Us. It does. It's, it's something that we got to shake off. We got to shake off. This is a veteran-laden team. They seem to be going through the motions right now. Maybe it's a good thing that it's going on right now. It's what a lot of people are harping on. It's also maybe a good thing, the fact that they're hearing the heat from the fans. There's plenty of bluebirds going yeah. around. But, you know, I think the hitting will get it get it together. But I, it's the starting pitching. And I think they need to figure out a way to maybe go get an arm or two sooner rather than later. Maybe try and get a cheap deal for, like, a Lance Lynn or – I don't know. I know Giolito will cost a lot, but, you know, I don't really want Bumgarner. But there's, there's starting pitching that you can go get. I don't know how much it will cost you, but obviously we don't want to trade the kids. We want to keep the kids, you know, you know, we want to see the kids grow in this organization. So we don't want to trade away the farm. So it is what it is. That's what happened this week in Metland, guys. I know we're moving quick because we have a fun activity for you guys. Um, a lot of people are talking about, hey, why did they bring back the same team? Why did they not go get this? Why is this team not hitting the way they're hitting? Why they don't have a DH? Why is Vogel back here? Why this? And so many questions. Why is Epler the way he is? And, you know, why isn't the the owner coming in and kicking, you know, can, garbage cans and screaming and doing this whole charade? Yeah. And doing, it's interesting because so many people want these, like, big tantrums to occur just so they can fill this void in their like own like misery, but that ain't gonna get somebody to hit a ninety-seven mile per hour fastball any faster. All if right. anything, is gonna make them even more nervous and put more pressure on them and make them look even worse. So, just continue to whine, complain, and moan because that's what you do as a fan. It is what it is. I understand what it is, but if you're asking for like this George Steinbrenner thing because you're so obsessed with the fact that he wasn't your owner, and now you have an owner with pockets very similar you want him to be him it's not gonna work guys it doesn't work not everybody's the same human being not everybody finds success the same way success is not linear um yeah so listen it is what it is cohen is gonna do whatever cohen is doing we don't know what cohen is doing he's not in the dugout he probably is upstairs with certain decisions but it is what it is so i don't think that's really productive um but if that's what you're into Shout out to you. Do I want Buck to show a little bit more fire? Yes. Do I want him to get kicked out of a game that we can win? No. So if the game is completely lost, like the one in Detroit, and Jeff McNeil is pissed and Francisco Alvarez is pissed, maybe go stand up for your guys. There I agree with the fact that Buck should have been thrown out. But whatever. I'm moving off where I'm going. The, 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 excuse me, I lost my frame of words. But, um, the, the fun stuff we're going to do today is, you know, we're going to answer a lot of the questions. So, I have um, questions that Met fans have. I have a ton of transactions from 2021, the start of 2021. I have them all in front of me. I have notable ones, only notable. I don't have them all, all right? I'm not yeah. ESPN. And I'm going to go through the list, and you are going to let me know which one is going to be... Like one that's notable based off the panic button that we have. The Shane and Sons panic button is going to be put to the test. So I purposely handpicked quite a few. I actually have a whole page full of them. So we're going to go through them and we're going to give detail. I'm going to see why these are notable ones, why we need to talk about them, why, why this could help or hurt the franchise. So for everybody that's listening and tuning in, put your opinion in the comments. Let us know. Which ones you think the panic button should have been hit on immediately when these moves happened. Okay? Because we're going to take a look down memory lane 
I understand that, you know, hindsight is, you know, 2020, but when you're running a baseball team, sometimes when you have the right people in position to make those decisions, you probably don't do the activity that we're about to do. Activity. That was what I was looking for. Activity. Jesus Christ. All right, guys. Sunday morning. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So this activity is going to be the panic button activity from the Shane Sons podcast. So we're going to start 2021, January 5th, January. We're in the offseason. January 5th, 2021, the Mets signed Brandon Drury. Not bad. Good. All good. How are we feeling? I'm good. It is good on that. Move on. All right. Good on it. Two days later, the Mets the Mets ignite one of the biggest trades they ever, you know, accomplished. The Mets now trade Ahmed Rosario and Jimenez and Josh Wolf for Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. Panic Fantastic. Bun. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, we whoa, hear panic whoa. button. Oh, whoa, panic button whoa. on this move. Panic button. The panic button has been hit. Oh, boy. Only because Carlos Carrasco is awful. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he did not need to be brought in this trade. I'm sorry. That's I, all. I Other than been... that, I'm fine with the trade. It was what? a great trade. That's all it. right. So genuine question. And for the people listening, was this a salary throw in? No, nah, right? It couldn't have been, right? It, it must have been a, something the Mets wanted back, right? To equal the value. Had to have been, right? Because the Mets didn't just, even have Yeah, I think they just, I think they just, to your point, they just wanted to equal the value, I think. Ah. That was all. Interesting. We um, needed we need a starting pitching too. I mean, but uh, yeah, Carlos Carrasco. I mean, he was coming off an injury too, right? Ugh, yeah, God. yeah. And so you know what? Panic too. button. I like that panic button on that trade because that is a valuable piece of information that you're providing because everybody wants to look back at why did we give up Jimenez for Lindor? <laughs> Guys, everybody out there, go look at Jimenez and numbers and compare it to Lindor and eat a fat one. Moving on to the next move, another <laughs> trade. All right, you ready for this one? Okay. Um, All right. The Mets trade Steven Matz for Yancy Diaz and Sean Reed Foley. This is uh, January 27th of 2021. I'm not going to hit it. Okay. Because that's, you're, trading, you're trading a diaper for a trash bag. I, so. I, I knew it was coming. Okay, fair enough. All right, yeah. fair enough. Um, the Mets then, on the 30th of January 2021, sign Aaron Loop. I like Aaron Luke. Aaron Luke was pretty it. good. He was a good Met. So he was, he was yeah. fine for us. Yeah, he was yeah. fine for us. Moving on, the Mets make another sign, uh, signing, excuse me, on the 11th of February. Jonathan VR. I was a Jonathan VR. VR fan. was fine. I like VR. VR was fine for us. He was a nice yeah, player. VR was fine. He was um, fine for us. To continue this little trend of signings, um, on the 20th of February, um, the Mets signed Taiwan Walker. I like Taiwan. Tony I'm not going to hit the button. Like the Ty- Taiwan was fine for us. Was a big fan I, I, of Ty. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was a big, I was a big fan of Ty. I, I just hate that he couldn't pitch half of the season. I know, man. It sucked. I was, <laughs> I was every year. Yeah. I was, I was, I was pleasantly, pleasantly, not pleasantly. No, I was, this, I was pretty pissed when we let him go. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is. He was a good pitcher for us. I mean, Ty, Ty, Ty could only give you. A game or two after the All Star break, and then it was just rough settings for him, you know. But you know what? Yeah. He gave a lot for the for the organization, and he really liked his time here. So, Tywin Walker, yeah. you're probably gonna never listen to this, but if you do, shout out to you. Sucks you went to shout Philly. You, Sucks you went to Philly, but I understand yeah. you had to get the bag. You know, go get your bag, yeah. brother. It is what it is. Um, the Mets weren't gonna offer you that money, so you know it is what no. it is. Um, so that move, the 20th of February. In 2021, I didn't find anything notable until July 30th of 2021. The Mets trigger another trade. They then trade Pete Crow Armstrong for Javier Baez and Trevor Williams. I have a feeling that we're going to have a... The panic button has been hit. Listen, man. At the time... At the time, it was it was a move that they thought can help them continue to compete yeah. because they had just given up the lead to the Braves yeah. in the division. Yeah. Um, Javi, Javi in his time here definitely alienated the fan base. Yes. He wasn't what we, what we asked for and what we obviously paid for. Um, his numbers were fine. 
Mm-hmm. It was just his attitude on the field did not help, and him being a ear, uh, a voice in Lindor's ear, um, and you know the whole dumbs down situation. It just wasn't a good look for us, and it also, I just, I just felt like this move was a panic move. Yeah, uh, which is why I had the button at the time. Yeah, I agree, you want to look back at that offense, like we we couldn't hit, and yeah. and they just wanted to try to keep up with the Braves. So, I mean, he had a yeah. good what like two months with us. I mean, I was a big fan yeah. of him being with the organization, but we Me saw too. what unfolded. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, the fan base really like didn't like what happened with the whole thumbs down, thumbs up thing. And then, you know, even though they hated him for that, they then twerked like some nasty strippers for him when he stole home or scored on home and lost a diamond yeah. earring. So it's very weird how the fans move, whatever it is, what it is. You know, who, who would have thought, you know, somebody could be that butthurt by a thumbs up, thumbs down. But for to each his own, even the player was upset about it. So it is what it is. We move on. It sucks. Would have loved pre Crow Armstrong here, but... If he would have been here, probably Nimmo doesn't exist anymore as a New York Mets. So I guess it's right. like you don't know what would have happened. The best part about this deal is that we got Trevor Williams for a year and a half. And I think we should have kept him. But, you know, yeah, me too. it's just um, it's just one of those situations where a trade that just doesn't go right doesn't go right at all. Um, it Technically, you could say we won the short-term version of this trade, but we definitely lost the long-term version of this trade. And... Um, yeah, we move on. Um, that was a trade deadline deal. I didn't find anything notable after that until the offseason. And then this is where some interesting things occurred. Uh, moving on to the offseason of the 2021 year, November 3rd, the Mets decide to move on from Michael Conforto. Panic button has been hit. <laughs> panic button. The chains of the panic button uh, arise again. <laughs> Listen. Michael Conforto, if you go, if, the way I looked at him in his time here, he yeah. was very he was very good for us. I was a Michael Conforto fan. He was mm-hmm. my favorite player on the team. Um, he had a very horrible season that last season. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing: McNeil in that same season had a horrendous season as worse. well, and both of them were his worst. And both of them were coming off of good seasons before then. Yeah. So if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna you know give credit to one guy and keep him on the team, you know, if you're going to do it for one, keep it consistent for the other. Yeah. These are two homegrown products and you kept one because I don't know, maybe you banked on McNeil bouncing back more than Conforto plus Conforto has injury history. Maybe they thought of it like that, but I just felt like we could have kept Conforto and I think he's still an upgrade over Cano. Yeah. So. Oh, without a doubt. I, I would, yeah. I would love Michael back instead of Canna. I, I, you know how I feel about Mark Canna, honestly. If I could, yeah. if I could trade Marcana today, I would honestly. And you know what? I, I'm normally very like kind to my players, and you know I I do give them shit when they deserve it. But Marcana, trash. One of the worst. People give a lot of shit to Escobar, and I know Escobar was a bad signing, and we you yeah. know spoiler alert, we're gonna get to that. But Marcana was brought in here to be what? And people want to give me his WRC plus. Marcana has not shown up. Guys, get it together. Mark Hanna has not done anything but hit a home run in Philadelphia. That's it. And get and hit get hit by pitches because, you know, Mark Hanna just loves to get touched <laughs> by the baseball. That's it. That's a special move is do this, you know? Like, come yeah. on, bro. Like, whatever, bro. There's so many beta, better baseball players than him. Um, and for people who defend him, I get it. You like him. It's cool. I am not here to change your opinion. Just don't try and change mine. Simple. You know what I'm saying? Uh, moving on to three days later, the Mets say goodbye to Noah Syndergaard. Not going to hit the button. He was a bum. Not going to hit Sorry. the button. I agree. I think that was a good move. I actually liked Syndergaard. I was um, upset that we let him go because we needed the pitching, and I wanted him to be like our fourth or fifth guy. And But he was a, he was a bird. He was a complete asshole to fans too, you know? He wasn't a good guy, and I didn't like how he. Uh, I, I didn't like how he treated the fan base. You know, a lot of people give shit for the whole up and down thing with the thumbs with Baez and Lindor and whatever. But this guy, like, out. He was just outright rude to people. Like, he genuinely. Yeah. And people like gave him the whole Thor moniker, and they they uh they were wearing the Thor hats, and they were having the hammers in the stadium, and he just, he didn't do shit. He did. He 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 had that good you know, World Series game that he hit the guy, whatever, and that's how I remember him. That's it. So 
Yeah. Look, it, it, whatever. Billy, uh, ooh, about to spoil this one, but uh, Noah Syndergaard, whatever. Anyways, moving on to the 18th of November, the Mets um, find themselves a uh, general manager, Billy Epler. Sorry. Sorry. Funk master flex bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Billy Epler is Billy Inepler. You like that one? I like Billy that one. I've heard Go that on. a few Go times. On, right? Yeah, I like that one. Hey, listen, Billy Epler sucks. He's an awful GM. <laughs> I I can't stand the guy. I look at him and I want to smack the shit out of him. Yeah, he's Billy uh... Epler. He he is not a he's not a good general manager. He is not a general manager in that in the fucking major league baseball you know league. Um, yeah, I I just I just felt like he is here. I feel like he's here to bring us one person yeah because he did it in anaheim and i think that's his only purpose is to bring us that one person we don't have to name him y'all already know who he is but that that's really his only purpose so moving on everything now moving forward is a billy up the move so just notice that i gave you moves a little bit before him why i did that is because this is the cohen era so cohen really didn't have a true gm he had a guy who was like doing the that guy who got drunk and got fired, and then Al, Al, Sandy Alderson had to help. And for all the Met fans out there that want to be very particular and give us the names, cool. Give us the names in the comments, cool. But I I don't really think that's uh, important right now because we're moving. The more important stuff is from here forward. Um, yeah. The twenty second of November, the first true notable move under the Billy Epler era, in my opinion. Uh, they let go of Aaron Loop. He go gets the bag at, and at the Angels. Um, very big bag. Um, hasn't really been good in Anaheim, but that was the first move. What do you think? No. Um, I'm not hitting the button because he has been bad since he left us. Yeah, but he was better than Joey Rodriguez, Joely Rodriguez. So absolutely. I mean, I'm not gonna hit the button because it's not worth it. But just want to point that out. Fair enough. No, fair enough. I mean, the money for a reliever that was on the wrong side of 30 now nah, you know pro probably used the best parts of his career with us so it is what it is he was a good yeah. man he was a really good man um yeah. might have been the best player on the team in 2021 if we're being honest but um <laughs> that is the end of the aaron loop era as a new york mets uh just eight days later second move or actually the second moves under billy epler and the billy epler slash cohen era um mark canna and starling Marte become new york mets I'm hitting the panic button for one of them and not the other. So Marte was probably like top five most important bets last year. Yeah. Like when he went down, you saw how bad the offense was. And I know he's been bad this year. Yeah. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. So I'm not going to hit the button on him because he panned out for one year. He was an all-star. Got to right. give him credit for that. Hitting the panic button for Mark Canna. Mark Canna. When he was brought in, he was brought in to be Michael Conforto's replacement or just a, you know, just a corner outfielder because Dom Smith couldn't play it. Mark Hanna has been very mid. He hasn't done much. He's just here to be a professional teammate. That's it. And we, we already touched on this, so we don't have to harp on it. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't brought us anything. And it hasn't been a good signing, but thankfully he's going after this year. Yeah. So this is where it is. Yeah. Clock's ticking, homie. Can't wait. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Better get ready because you better find a nice condo in Oakland. That's where you headed. Anyways, moving on. Um, you know, back to old stomping grounds. I don't want to go shopping there no more. I really don't want to go shopping there, you know? <laughs> I want to go shopping in the nice Whole Foods. I don't want to go to the food bazaars no more. Whole Foods, I want the Mexico shopping in Whole Foods and those nice big supermarkets, you know, the ones where yeah. you get the, the nice, you know, organic shit, you know what I'm saying? The nice, you know, no, no uh, sea town, no, yeah, no, no sea town, no, no food bazaar, <laughs> you know, the stuff where Puerto Ricans go and shop where I like to go. No, 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 We, I want to go to the nice, the nice supermarkets, you know what I'm saying? Get the gluten free shit, you know what I'm saying? That's why I want to shop. So no more of this Oakland A shit, please, because everybody else, everybody else who go and goes and gets Oakland A players, they, they pan out for them, but they don't pan out for us. We're going to touch on another one coming up very soon. But even though Marte was an Oakland A player, he wasn't really through their system. He was there, you know, via trade. So I, I don't really, I don't I really count him, yeah. to be honest with you. So yeah. it is what it yeah. is. Uh, we, we literally outright studied Marcana's years in Oakland and thought that was a cool idea to bring him over. So whatever. 
it is what it is. Moving on. Um, the 1st of December, uh, last move of 2021 before we head into 2022, we signed two more players, Eduardo Escobar and Max Scherzer. Are you dead ass? You know what? No way. You're not dead ass. Uh, all right. So I'm going to hit the buy. I'm, I'm going to hit the buy in. Because because of this, but I I just want to preface what I'm saying before I say it. Max Scherzer was brought in to be an ace for a team that had no ace, mm-hmm. right? So at the time, at the time, let's a let's team be that real. Had no ace. What do you mean by that? At the oh, time, oh, we had the ground. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We had the guy who pitches five games a year. My bad. Sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. There's only My five bad. aces in the deck, so it is what it is. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, get, get back to the point. Uh, um, I'm gonna hit the button because the years and uh, the, obviously the term, the, the 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 years and and the money for Max Scherzer at the time, not great. And we're seeing we're seeing what's going on now with him. It's, it wasn't a good move. Um, you know, he I thought he only had like a two year shelf life, and we signed mm-hmm, him for three years. Mm-hmm, Go figure. The New York Met way. Um, as it pertains to Escobar. I'm hitting the button on him too. Mm-hmm. I'm hitting the button on him too. But when it comes to Escobar, I didn't really expect much. You know, okay. I didn't really, I wasn't really expecting 30 home runs and almost 100 RBIs like he had the season prior. Because as we know, just in sports in general, if you're a sports fan, you know that guys are looking for that bag and that the year that they're, you know, the contract is up, that's, that's usually their best year. So I, I, I wasn't really expecting much from Escobar to be honest and if you look at his years but prior to that he was just an okay baseball player and that's what I figured we were gonna get and that's what we got in but actually worse than that so it hasn't worked out when we signed him who said he was gonna suck you did yep. you, you definitely did yep that panic button smashed that shit it is what <laughs> they had to get Scherzer <laughs> they had to get him because they didn't yeah, get, yeah, that, they didn't get the guy point, yeah. from um, Toronto the guy who throws the split finger for Kevin Gosman. They didn't get him. They wanted him. They didn't get him. So the next best alternative was to go get Scherzer, which a lot of people at the time, remember, we were in your in the basement, me and you, and dad came through, and we were shocked that the news broke. So we didn't really yeah. think we had a chance. So, you know, it is what it is. We didn't know that Max Scherzer was going to fall off this cliff, but we probably should have, honestly, as fans. But, you know, you hear the name, you get excited. It is what it is. Right. For the first half of last year, he was pretty good. I thought he was pretty solid, honestly. And he held it down while um, uh, Jake was out. So, um, yeah, definitely panic button. So, we move on to 2022. All right. Um, we let go of Marcus Stroman. Not in the button. Now we're the my button. time. All right. All right. Cool. Got you. Cool. I agree. We move forward to March 12th of 2022. Mets make another trade. Mets trade JT Ginn and Adam Ollier for Chris Bassett. Not in the button. I agree. I agree with that. He, he was, although I didn't, I don't like Chris Bassett. I never liked Chris Bassett. He was good for us. He was solid. Yeah. I'll take Chris Bassett. I, I I'll take last year's Chris Bassett this year. Oh yeah. You know I know that Inning I know that he was bad. Stuff. He's oh, been yeah. bad this year. Yeah. I know he's been bad this year. And I'm glad we didn't sign him. I didn't want him back. But Chris Bassett served the purpose. It was, uh, you know, a low-risk move. Mm-hmm. And it paid off, yeah. in my opinion. I agree. I think uh, you gave away nothing to get a, a full year of very adequate starting pitching. You can't go wrong with that in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Even though he's a complete dick. Yeah. But moving on. Um, the the 14th <laughs> of, of March, we signed Adam Arvino. Not in the bye. He's been great. I agree. The 19th of March, we let go of New York Mets legend Jonathan VR. Not in the bye. Neither am I. Not worth it. All right. The third, uh, excuse me. No, excuse me. March 21st, we let go of Brandon Jury. Some fans would want to hit the button, Mm -hmm. but Brandon Jury, he was a, a. a journeyman when yep. we got him and i know he's i know he's flourished since you know his departure but we didn't see that coming even I as agree. fans you can't tell me how you saw that coming yeah, so it I is agree. what it is yeah it would have been nice if he would have done what he did in cincinnati with us but he only had yeah. like 
one or two good months with the Mets. But they didn't play him. Luis he, Rojas didn't play yeah, him. So he, it is he didn't get the true playing time. And, you know, he got it out in Cincinnati, but then when he gets traded to the Padres, he didn't do anything, which, uh, you know, that landed him in, I think he's in Anaheim now. So, yeah. yeah. Or, excuse me, Anaheim, Los Angeles, whatever they want to call themselves now. It is what it is. Anyways, yeah. um, the 3rd of April of 2022, the Mets traded Miguel Castro to the Yankees. Reliever. Goodbye. Okay, fair enough. I liked him. He wasn't that bad. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to hit the button. Okay. I got to hit the delay. button. Respect the delay. What happened? Uh, uh, yeah, respect the delay. Now that I'm thinking about it, then we get Joely Rodriguez back in that trade? Well, that was where I was going to get to, but yeah. We we got we got Joely Rodriguez <laughs> back in that trade. And Brandon Miguel Castro actually, actually he he had a good Yankees. year. Yeah, yeah he definitely. had a good year with the Yankees, but... The Yankees are just bullpen whispers, you know, with certain guys, and they they fix them. So yeah, I'm in the button only because we got a worse reliever back. I'll piggyback. That was bad. I'll piggyback with you. Um, fourteen days later, the Mets signed Adonis Medina. <laughs> yeah, moving on. <laughs> <That's> uh, <perfect. laughs> moving on. May eighth, which is one day from today, the Mets released 40 million dollar owed robinson cano great move great move okay i agree i agree because right now he's playing softball in washington heights moving on to the 22nd of july of last year the mets make another famous trade do you recall this trade last july 22nd big trade big trade Huge trade. Huge, huge, ginormous. Are we talking Tyler Naquin? Ooh, hot, but not hot enough. We are talking about trading away um, a reliever who just had an immaculate inning for the oh. Pittsburgh Pirates in Collar Hol- Colin or Connor. I don't know. Is it Colin? It's Colin. Colin Holderman for Daniel yeah. Vogelbach. We're yeah. in the button on that. Big time. We're in the button on that. Colin We're in the button Holderman on that because is nasty. And, Colin he, was, Holderman, and he was nasty yeah. with us. That's the he crazy was nasty part. With us. Yeah. It wasn't I, like he I don't was trash. Under... He was nasty with us. No, no. He was he was great with us, and I don't understand how you see that and just think, oh, okay, we'll we'll get him for a journeyman who yeah. can't hit, who only walks and can't field yeah. and only eats. You know, but let's <laughs> say they and, and finds Instagram filters, but uh moving on yeah. to uh <laughs> The 28th of July, which is five days later than then, the Mets trade Jose Acuna and Hector Rodriguez for Tyler Naquil or Nyquil or Naquin, whatever you call him. I don't know. Watching him was Nyquil. So yeah, he was pretty bad. He was garbage. He was garbage. It, well, oh, you got to hit the button. He's that, not was bad. that was, I oh, mean, wait, it's trash. Yeah, yeah, trash. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. I, I'm going to hit the button. And, uh, I'm gonna hit the button because it was a bad move, not because yeah, I actually. Yeah, they care probably could have got better. I agree. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, the second of August last year, and probably the most famous trade the Mets have made since the Lindor trade, the Mets offload J.D. Davis, Spalwecki, Seymour, and Swack, or I'm probably butchering these names for Darren Ruff, who no longer is a major league player for the Mets. He's with the Giants. Yeah, he's with the Giants. Sorry. Yeah, he's, yeah you got to hit the button for that one. Four, I, 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 I'm, I, yeah, I slammed the button um, for that. Four players for this guy. That, yeah. that, is, that is one of the worst Mets trades. One of the worst trades, maybe. At, one of the worst ever. trades in baseball, like, of the last 10 years. That was, that was awful. Four, Inexplicable. So, mind you, these are all moves under Mr. Epler, and I see why people and you are big, 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 big haters of this GM. And I... This, Listen, the track record is here. We're moving on to December of last year. We let go of Jacob Degrom. Big move. Now this is I'm very- gonna hit the button. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hit the button, okay. but not because I want to hit the button. Okay. Because you know where I stand with Jacob Degrom. I'm gonna hit the button because you got to find a way to keep your ace. Okay. No matter no matter what team you are, you got to find a way to keep your guy. Understand he was on the wrong side of 30, and he continued to pile up the injuries. I'm only speaking to my point on why I didn't want to sign him. But I hear that. I hear that. Homegrown, homegrown talent, 
he was one of the guys like the Harvey, the Syndergaard, the you know, on that picture that everybody loves to bring up. Yeah. Um, and you had a chance to keep him, and you didn't. And I'm gonna hit the button for that reason, that reason only, not because I actually thought it was a bad move. Yeah, I mean, um, listen, yeah. franchise player, money got involved, injury history got involved. This is one that I truly will allow everyone to share their opinion because honestly, I don't yeah. think there's no right answer. It's it's a tough move. Right. Um, right. I wanted to keep him. You didn't. It's fair. Nobody's wrong here. He's hurt now. It's easy to say, you know, schedule tweet. I get it. But, uh, you know, it's tough seeing a guy like that play in a different uniform. So it is what it is. We got to yeah. move on. Uh, moving on to eight days later, last December, on the 10th of uh, December, we let go of Trevor Williams, which completes the bias deal. We should have kept Trevor Williams. We should have kept Trevor Williams. I'm not going to hit the button because Trevor Williams is just meh. You know, but I liked him. In yeah, so did I. He's not good now with the Nationals, but he's playing with the Nationals. I mean, yeah, he's good I mean, like he wasn't. I, I would He's not good. And I know you no, need no, good he's not players, good. but but he he played an integral role in our team last year. Here's a question: Answer in the comments. Tweet it at us. Let us know who's better, Tyler Mc. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. Who's better, Tyler McGill or Trevor Williams? Honest question. Who's better? I'm not going to say Peterson. I was going to say him, but Peterson's in the farm. So clearly, Trevor Williams is better. He's awful. So Trevor Williams yeah, is immediately yeah. better. But who's better? Tyler yeah. McGill or Trevor Williams? Let us know. Honestly, I don't know the answer to that. I don't. It's a decent question because I don't think there's a right answer. And I, think, I mean, you could point to the stats, but still, the eye test. Like, come on. Like, and I think that huh. question, because it's not, you know, one of the questions we, ha we have an answer for is the reason why they let him go. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, I, to uh, me, that's my that's one of my more interesting, you know, takes from this whole list that I made. Um, moving on, six days later, the Mets release three players all at once. Well, not release, but they just cut ties. Uh, Trevor May, which I was happy about, trash. Tywin Walker and Chris Bassett all leave the organization. They all find homes. They all move on to their own pastures, but no more, no longer Mets. Not, I'm not hitting the butter for any of those. All right. Now, interesting. Now, if we kind of just go back in time, one of these guys, Chris Bassett, was a deal done after Epler was here. So two of the three were non-Epler guys. So maybe that's why two of the three were no longer, you know, met players after this day. So it makes you wonder why he didn't bring back Bassett. But then I, we all know that Bassett wasn't a big fan of New York. So maybe if right. Chris Bassett was more of a New York kind of player who didn't mind the scenery and, you know, the media and stuff, probably would have brought him back because that's that's a Billy Upper guy. So, um, so that wraps up us shopping in Oakland. Thank the Lord. Uh, but who knows? We may shop there very soon. Um, the 22nd of last December, we let go of Seth Lugo, who is now a starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres. And he always wanted to be a starter. He never got the chance to do it here. He was never going to be a starter here, so I'm not going to hit the button. I disagree. He would have started games this year. Well, yeah, yes, he would have started games this year. But to if we're looking at the pitching market, there were a lot of better options than trying to change a reliever into a starting pitcher. Um, a reliever who sucked with us at the very end of his career with us. So I think, you know, it's a catch-22 in that respect. Is but Seth, he was pitching great in, 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 in San Diego, so got to give him credit for that. Is Seth Lugo better than McGill? I, yeah. I feel like uh, they, they should have kept him. They should have kept him, and then it would have probably been, you know, you have Verlander, Scherzer, Sanga, Lugo, um, McGill, and then player to be named later, or Lucchese, you know? So, it is what it is. That's fair. Yep. I think that one deserves a panic button, personally. That, it's fine. That's, That's just fair. me. Um, the fourth of this year, we move on to 2023. Um, Dom Smith was let go from the organization. Bye-bye. I agree. Good guy, though. One of the more Good guy. Good. one of the more nice guys that I actually like liked because I don't like this nice. I'm guy. rooting for him. Yeah, so am I. It was I'm a nice guy. You know, I you guys know how I feel about nice guys, but um, is what it is. He just wasn't 
performing uh, as a New York Met anymore. It sucked. It was uh, it, it sucked. Yeah, you know, it sucked that to see him slump and not perform. So yeah, he moved yeah. on. I guess he hit a home run the other day, which you know ended his streak of a homeless homerless drought. So shout out to Don Smith, man. Um, would love to would love to, to ever meet that guy. He seems like a fun dude too, by the way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it kind of sucked. Um, the Mets then. The 24th of December, excuse me, of this January, we brought on Tommy Pham. I'm in the button. I'm in the button because Tommy Pham was brought in to be a possible DH slash fourth outfielder, and he's done. Yeah. He's done nothing. Yeah, no, he's done nothing. Um, he's done nothing outside of. What it was a series in Miami where he had what four RBIs and a home run. Congrats! Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Yeah, not not great. Now I couldn't get the date for the last move here. This is the last move of the list, but it's pretty much bringing on Justin Verlander, and I don't think we need to put the panic button for that because no. we, I think we all agree Justin Verlander will come good. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But that pretty much wraps up that little activity we wanted to bring you guys. Let us know what you guys think about. This entire list we went through. Let us know if we were wrong on some. Let us know if you know we were right on some. And let us know any moves yeah. I missed. This is just me yeah. just kind of doing research and spitballing. So um, let's just quickly round up uh, around the league. Any notes, Any anything you just catching your eye for any teams out there? Uh, the AL East is crazy. I know. And I was wrong. I uh, thought we were going to be better than them. And the AL East is yeah, shutting me up. They're, yeah, they're amazing. I, I, Shout out to AL East. I was I was with you on that. I thought that we were going to be the most competitive yeah. division in baseball, but the AL East is crazy. Shout out the Baltimore Orioles, man. Shot them out, man. The Baltimore Orioles are playing very good oh, yeah. uh, baseball right now. Jorge Mateo has been lighting it up. Um, but the, shout out Richie. the Red Sox. Right. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Richie. Shout out Richie for that. Shout out our boy Iman for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Iman. Iman. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's big a, Baltimore that's a little Orioles homie, guys. Man. Yeah. Iman's a little homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Red Sox have been, have Yo, been lighting it up. up. How about Yoshida? How about my Japanese players? Bro? Yeah. He's going crazy. Know, man. Yoshida. He's going crazy. Um, yeah. I, I, the, 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 okay. AL East has been, yeah, the yeah. AL East has been crazy, and, and the Yankees are 10 games back. Yeah, man. They're going through it, man. A lot of injuries. It is what it is, man. Uh, I feel like a lot of issues they have, we have too. It's very weird. Um, yeah, yeah. Very similar situation with what's going on with us. I do want to give yeah. my one take about around the league. We haven't mentioned this team quite enough. We should. But shout out the rattlesnakes in the desert. Those boys, boys, are playing baseball. Those boys are playing some good baseball. Shout out to them. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. Hopefully they slow down because they might be a reason why we don't make the playoffs. But neither here nor there. Anyways. <laughs> Um, also, I've been to that park. Very nice, by the way. Um, your bozo of the week. Then I'll go my bozo. Then we'll go our amazing of the week. And then we wrap this baby up. Your bozo of the week. Bozo of the week goes to Max Scherzer. And I think that you could have went with a lot of guys for bozo of the week. But Max Scherzer, Max Scherzer was awful in that start. I know that we touched on it before, but... He was awful. I know that he had 10 days of rest. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, he he was bad. N nothing more to say other than that. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I it's hard not to agree. I could try and find another name and be cute about it, but Max is really bad. Max is really bad, and it's really bad for the foreseeable future because, you know, we, we, we are now going to remember the sticky stuff thing more than anything. Yeah. If he doesn't yeah. perform without it, you, it makes you wonder how long he was using it, you know, or yeah. he, why he, if he ever got away with it in, in his better days. So, you know, right. that's a very, very touchy subject. Um, but yeah, it's just the honest truth. It is what it is. This is what we do here. We keep it a buck, you know. Um, you're amazing of the week. My amazing of the week. I mean, the guy continues to hit the cover off the ball. It's, it's going to Brett Beatty. Brett Beatty, Beatty is, nice. Okay. Uh, Brett, Beatty, Brett Beatty is continuously, you know, he comes and he shows up and, and he's ready to fucking play. Like, we need guys like that. One thing I want to point out with Brett Beatty is that I've noticed this a lot in watching him is mm. that he doesn't give up on a play. I think I mentioned it last yeah. week. Like, he really does not give up on, mm. on the defensive end. And yeah. we, all we've been hearing from from people on their end and, and you know, people close to, to the Mets is that 
can't play they look defense. at these guys that, and and they can't play defense and they're showing us on the major league level mm-hmm. that they can more than handle their own absolutely so absolutely. yeah it makes it makes us look stupid well it, as it, an organization it's like, it does yeah as yeah, an organization absolutely. it makes us look stupid in in evaluating talent yeah absolutely i'm gonna i'm gonna do you one better because i don't disagree with you but i'm gonna give my amazing of the week to francisco alvarez he started yeah. quite a lot of games this week he's fifth five for his last 15 extra base hit in there two rbis two walks strikeouts are a little down i think this kid is gonna be something special i'm starting to see what people are saying that this kid is there's a reason why this kid is the number one prospect in the organization i'm starting to see it because there's so much that goes into catching that I'm do, I'm looking at so many intricacies of what catchers are doing this year. And um, the kid is 21 years old. Come on. He ranks third in all of Major League Baseball in strikeout rate as a, as a catcher. So for the people out there that think, you know, people are crazy when they say, yo, the way Nito calls a game is different than the way Alvarez calls a game. They're right. You know what I'm saying? Nito is nowhere near the metrics that Francisco Alvarez is at. So if this team is really driven by analytics, Francisco Alvarez is here to fucking stay. And if he's not, best believe I'm going to have a problem. So shout out to Francisco yeah. Alvarez. Yeah, to, to piggyback off of that, I believe I read a stat, what was it, uh, Thursday or Friday, where there was a comparison between, shout out, uh, there, there's a guy on Twitter named uh, Nemo OPS or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He, That's yeah, my boy, he Nemo. pointed out. Yeah, he pointed out the difference between Nito catching and Alvarez catching and the batting average between them. Nasty. And it's kind of staggering. It's like a 40-point difference yeah. when when Nito catches and Alvarez catches. Like, Alvarez is calling a much better game than Nito. Not to mention, Nito's frame rate is down a lot this year. Oh, God, yeah. So what is, what, if he's not providing even that, what is the point of having him on the team? I've said it. Thomas Nito is overweight. Confidence is gone. He doesn't look like a major league baseball player. He came into this season yeah. overweight, out of shape. So has Luis Guillorme. Those two guys are on like, like the hot seat with a lot of fans. Luis Guillorme, I love the glove, but if you're just up there just to just do the you know Ray Adorno shit, that's not that's not gonna cut it in 2023. I know Buck like his defenders. I there's part yeah. of me that has a soft spot for Guillorme, but he's not done anything with the bat. So. You know, we need so, he needs to show some. As for Thomas Nito, you know, I, I'm look, bro. I don't want to be mean to one of my, you know, island men, but bro, you have to either step it up or you are gonna be playing baseball with um Trevor Bauer very soon. <laughs> I'm just yeah. letting you know, bro. I'm just letting you know. Bro. Yeah. So that's episode seven, baby brother. We seven episodes episode in, seven. bro. We yeah, actually yeah, really the Jose doing Reyes the damn thing, bro. What'd you say? <laughs> oh, the Jose the Reyes, Reyes, Reyes episode. episode. Yeah, Jose Reyes. <laughs> man, I would love Jose Reyes right now, man. Oh, man. Yeah. So, episode 7. Thank you to everybody who's tuning in. Shout out to all the people who mess with us on Twitter, man. We yep. you know, we mess with all you guys. We, we think the world of you guys. You know, we try to be level-headed. We try not to push no angles, no agendas. We're fair to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know... Shout out to everybody that thinks batting average is just as good as a wedding band. So, you know, shout out to you guys. Shout out to everybody who actually thinks that every metric should be counted. Uh, Shout out to people who continuously ignore the fact that our starting pitching is garbage. And shout out to the fact that, you know, our owner is, you know, at Nick Games. It is what it is. Shout out to everything, you know. It's a mess. Everything's a mess. (laughs) You know, so we be I, guys. We stick together. We be I. It's only May. So we be I. But that's a wrap on episode seven, baby brother. We out. Thanks for checking out the Shades Sun Podcast. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. And stay tuned for the next episode.